How would we implement such a finite state automaton in C? Here is a very simple graph implementation using our array implementation that we learned about. So we can pretty much store weights in the adjacency matrix. You remember adjacency matrix defines from each state how to get to another state if that's possible, if there's an edge, and if there's an edge, then the weight is put in. So here we have from state 0 to state 1, we have an edge. And in our graph here, in our automaton, it's followed with B. And uh, from 0 to 3, we have another edge, which is A. Okay, so this means our adjacency matrix can look like this. And we, we can also have separately our end states which is just an array that says if a state is an end state or not. So we have state 2 and 3 here, which are end states, so they are marked being end states. All right, um, so in our example, we, we accept simplified regular expressions. There are, there's more complicated code to get the regular expression completely implemented, but I leave that out of this lecture. So this little automaton, by the way, is non-deterministic because it means you can have more than one edge that has the same symbol. So far we talked about finite state automatons, which, but here we talk about, we talked about actually deterministic automatons. Here we will use for the first time something which is non-deterministic. Non-deterministic means you have to make a choice. Yeah, for example, in state T1, if we read a symbol, an arbitrary character, we can either follow to this state or we can follow to this state. Okay, so that's now a difference which makes it non-deterministic. Okay, so the implementation we will talk about is able to recognize even these non-deterministic cases, but it won't be that efficient. But it doesn't matter for sake of this discussion. So let's have a look at our graph implementation. So we remember our graph implementation used the structure where we used our adjacency matrix with the edge values. Now our edge values are just the simple characters. And we have this array that says if something terminates or not. Now if the graph matches a certain string, which is basically our regex match function, we can use a recursive function um, from our graph from a certain state u. We try to find out if this matches a string. Yeah, and so we need to process a character in our string. If we have our first character, we assign our first character here. If the first character is zero, we know the strings are null terminated. That means we are done. That means we return if this node and this current state where we are, if that is the terminal state, then we are good. Otherwise, we have to follow the edges. So we find out the edge value between u and v in our adjacency matrix yeah, from state u. So let's say we are in state 3 and we read any character where we can follow edge 0 or edge 2. So if this is the character that we are searching, then we are good. Or if our edge value has a dot, which means it matches anything, then we check recursively on this new state if this matches the string and position our next character. So, and in the end, it will return true if it matches, otherwise it returns false. And now we can fill, populate our um, graph here at edges, and then we can check if it matches with the, the string A, B, B, C. Does it match or does it not match? Look at the graph. A, B, would go back, for example, here, and then we have B and C goes to T2. Yeah, so that would match. Right, so it should return true, which I think it does. 